I'm Dr. Kim Chi. I'm a medical oncologist and the chief medical officer at BC Cancer, which is in Vancouver, Canada. So the Titan study is an international randomized double-blind placebo-controlled phase three study that enrolled a broad population of patients with metastatic castration-sensitive prostate cancer. Just over a thousand patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive either apalutamide or placebo in addition to standard androgen deprivation therapy. The dual primary endpoints were radiographic progression-free survival and overall survival. We reported on the primary analysis in 2019, and this was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, which was conducted after about a median follow-up of 22 months. At that time, both RPFS and overall survival met statistical significance. Because of those results, the Titan study was unblinded at the time and about 40% of patients in the placebo group who had not progressed crossed over to receive open-label apalutamide. So this final event-driven overall survival analysis that we presented at the Genodo Urinary Cancer Symposium was conducted at a median follow-up of 44 months, so almost two additional years of follow-up, and after 405 events had occurred. In this final analysis, the risk of death with apalutamide was reduced by 35%, which is a hazard ratio of 0.65, and the p-value was less than 0.0001. This hazard ratio was similar to the hazard ratio of 0.67 at the primary analysis of Titan, despite the almost 40% of patients crossing over from placebo to receive apalutamide. After adjusting for this crossover effect in a pre-planned sensitivity analysis, what we saw is that the effect of apalutamide on overall survival increased with a hazard ratio of 0.52, indicating a reduction in the risk of death by about 40, 48% compared with placebo. So this treatment effect on overall survival favored apalutamide across all pre-specified subgroups, and <clears throat> treatment with apalutamide was also favored in a variety of other endpoints, including PFS2 and delayed de development of castration resistance. Patient reported health related quality of life was no different between the two arms, and there's no new safety signals. In fact, the cumulative incidence of a variety of adverse events were also similar between the apalutamide and placebo groups. So what we see are seeing is a robust overall survival benefit that's even more impressive considering that 40% of placebo patients cross over to receive apalutamide. And given the tolerability of apalutamide and the ease of administration and health-related quality of life results makes it a treatment of choice for patients with metastatic castration-sensitive prostate cancer. So Titan demonstrates the benefit of apalutamide across all the patient subgroups, and so it does become a treatment of choice for a broad spectrum of patients. However, abiraterone in the latitude study accrued only high-risk patients, but in the stampede study, there was also a broad spectrum of patients accrued, and a survival benefit with abiraterone was observed across subgroups in that study. So I believe abiraterone and prednisone is still an option. However, given the absence of head-to-head -head comparisons, selection of treatment will depend on weighing other factors, like the adverse event profile of abiraterone, which includes increased cardiovascular uh, risks, need for electrolyte, and liver test monitoring, and a need for prednisone. Apalutamide does have more simplicity in administration, but does have a risk of rash. Well, because of the lack of head-to-head -head comparisons, this is a very difficult question to answer. Chemically, structurally, apalutamide and enzalutamide are very similar, Although we do know there is difference in side effect profiles, uh, with rash being described with apalutamide and not with enzalutamide. And anecdotally, some people may say that fatigue may be more problematic with enzalutamide. We also have to be careful about cross trial comparisons of efficacy, as the Titan, Enzimet, and Arches trials were very different. In Enzimet, almost 50% of patients received docetaxel at the same time, and perhaps why we are seeing less of a an effect with the addition of enzalutamide in patients with visceral metastases and high volume disease in the subgroup analysis. With ARCHES, the overall survival was not different, but this was a secondary endpoint and the data are still immature at the time of the initial reporting. 
So with Titan, with very mature data now, we do have a clear demonstration of a good safety profile with a robust overall survival benefit, even despite that high rate of crossover from the placebo group. The use of osteoprotective agents like denosumab was permitted on the Titan study. I don't have the number of patients that were receiving osteoprotective agents offhand, but we do know from other studies that the use of these agents are probably suboptimal in many jurisdictions. Note that there did not appear to be an increased fracture incidence over time between the ADT and apalutamide group versus the ADT and placebo group. But given the substantially improved survival we're seeing with ADT intensification therapy, and that many patients can do well for years without progression, osteoporosis may become much more of a problem in the later years. So I certainly would advocate for bone mineral density evaluations and fracture risk assessments at baseline and follow-up and appropriate use of osteoprotective agents.